there's one more preseason game for the Miami Dolphins which will give the decision makers one last opportunity to see who's in and who's out in regards to is making the final 53-man roster. The final cut day is on August 31st and although not all the guys on this list are guys I think will be cut, I still would like to see some sort of a flash or glimpse of them that will make me feel good about their projection for the season. Is that selfish and possibly unfair of me? Yeah, I think it is. But we are, at times, selfish beings and I want comfort in knowing that these guys aren't just going to be automatically swallowed up by the rest of the depth chart never to be heard from again. I also understand that just because we haven't heard or seen anything from these guys in terms of amazing plays or wow moments that doesn't mean that they haven't had solid camps. Still, I would like to see a little something something out of these stealthy players in tomorrow's game against the Bengals. And since it is the last preseason game before we see the Miami Dolphins wear jerseys again until week one, why not have a few guys to focus on to keep yourself invested in what will probably be unexciting football? Enjoy the final preseason game with your favorite beverage and know that we're two weeks away from real deal Miami Dolphins football. Drink it in. Now to the list. Adam Butler. I had and still have high hopes for the latest passenger on the New England to Miami pipeline. Butler signed with the Dolphins in March and when that happened I said that move was going to be one of the Dolphins sneakiest good moves that they make all year. I still think that very well can be the case. I think Butler, though he hasn't been mentioned too much by the beat writers, will be one of the first guys to spell Christian Wilkins, Raekwon Davis, and Zach Sealer. Butler isn't simply an unproven guy who hasn't done much in the league. He's played in 31 games the last two seasons and has recorded 10 sacks in that time. That's pretty dang solid from a defensive tackle who isn't typically a starter. I don't think nor am I looking for Butler to put up numbers like that in Miami. That'd be great if that somehow happened but that would mean one of the other guys I mentioned had a setback of some kind. What Butler's job is, at the moment, is to step in every game for one of those guys, create piles, discomfort the quarterback up the middle, and play his gap. The Dolphins have been beyond suspect the past few seasons against the run so having quality depth at the defensive tackle position is something that can improve the entire attitude of the team. Larnell Coleman. Coleman, the Dolphins' seventh-round pick from this year's draft, stock has been slightly rising like a very poor man's phoenix. Coleman is another guy that for me I just thought would pan out without having any information or knowledge of who he was when he was drafted based solely on a gut feeling. He may certainly end up being a journeyman lineman for his whole career going from practice squad to practice squad. But, something about him is telling me that he's more than a seventh rounder and may end up being a swing lineman for the Dolphins in near future. If you read what the Dolphins beat writers have been saying about him, Larnell, sneaky cool name, has been progressing at a nice pace and has had some very solid days in camp. Tomorrow against the Bengals, I would think he would get a good amount of playing time to show that he's not just worthy of making the practice squad but be one of the illustrious 53. I wouldn't be surprised if he, in a relatively short amount of time, becomes the future Jesse Davis of the offensive lineman. I think he has that, at least, in him and probably more. Kirk Merritt. You may be thinking that Kirk Merritt doesn't deserve to be an under-the-radar guy and based on how much Dolphins Twitter talks about him you certainly get the impression that Merritt is on the verge of dominating the league. I, personally, haven't been as wowed with his production in the picture that's out there of Merritt being all types of yoked as impressive. But, Kirk has had a solid camp and he also had a very good performance last week against the Falcons even catching a touchdown. That can't be taken away from him. I guess I'm just tired of hearing about the legend of Kirk Merritt, who I think just might be Isaiah Ford in disguise. I just want Merritt to be good enough to make the team or not. No more will Kirk Merritt break out talk. With Ford, as if Ford won't undoubtedly be resigned at some point, and Robert Foster being released along with the news of Lynn Bowden Jr. being, geniusly, placed on the IR, this is as good as ever for Merritt to make the squad. That might mean overtaking Jakeem Grant, which I'm all for, but that's, in my opinion, doable. We all know Brian Flores' love for all things versatility, which Grant has. But Merritt has the chance tomorrow night to show that he is far and away the better wide receiver out of him and Grant. Go out there and do it, Kirk as if you're going to read this.